My name is Dami and I am a home baker. So today, yeah, I'm gonna be giving you guys a secret to get it. My name is Dami and I am a home baker. So today, yeah, I'm gonna be giving you guys a secret to get in like so much sales from Instagram. And when I say so much sales, let me give you a background, right? I recently got to Dublin. Now I bake in Dublin and I serve Dublin and its environs. And I recently got to Dublin about almost two years ago and i had to start from scratch and these are the strategies that has really helped me to build my business and now i run it full time from home yeah so full disclaimer right you don't have to be um like a huge cake brand you can be a home baker that runs a bakery from home and you can also have like a full-time job or you can do it part-time or anything you know you don't have to it doesn't have to be like you do it full time for you to be able to get people to buy from you so i'm going to give you the strategies that has helped me in the past two years yeah so to give you guys perspective i bake from home like i said i'm home baker <laughs> and this is my kitchen basically this is where i bake from this is all there is and this is where i do all of the baking and everything and this is my industrial fridge this is my home fridge and that's my other fridge this is where I do everything and it really isn't that big and I've been able to build a brand and create like an Instagram social media presence that gets me consistent sales. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how, you know, I did that, right? Okay, so number one, yeah, I have three tips I'm going to give you guys today. But before that, there are a few things you need to buy and if you don't, let me be honest with you, yeah? If you don't have the money to buy it or to put it in place, it might be something you already have at home. Really, don't bother because this is 2024 and there's some things that sells. That's the honest truth, right? It might seem maybe a little, a little like pretentious or I don't know. This is 2024 and there's some things that sell. Now, I'm going to give you two things you need. Number one is like you need a great background for your pictures. And number two, you need a good light. You can buy those round lights right i have i think about two lights i have the round ones people normally buy and i have the the studio ones you don't have to buy the expensive one you can just buy the round one and buy only one you don't it doesn't have to be something elaborate because you need your pictures to be well lit for you to sell something to someone you need to show them that it looks good they can only imagine that okay since it looks good it will most likely taste good because they've never tasted it before if you're trying to attract the instagram tiktok group yes so you need a great background. The background you don't need to buy. For example, if you follow me on social media, you know I take my pictures outside. I take them right there. I'll take my stool outside. Put it out there and take a picture. The good thing with taking pictures outside is you do not need light, right? But sometimes you can't take your pictures outside because of the time of the day. Or if you live in Europe or in certain parts of the world where you don't have a lot of daylight or sunlight, you need a light. So I always say buy a light stand and buy a good phone. Okay, so now that I told you the things you need, right? <laughs> the things you need to buy, let's get into the strategies themselves. So I have three most important strategies. Yeah, the first one is visual storytelling. The second is engagement strategies. And the third one is educational content. So let's talk about the first one, which is visual storytelling. So let me give you an example, right? There's this thing I saw on TikTok a couple of years ago that says that um, somebody has to see your post or your product about six to seven times before they even buy. Do you know what that means? It means that like it has to come to their front. It doesn't mean you post that six to seven times because sometimes you might post and Instagrams all good day might not show the person they showed yesterday basically. So you need to post as often as possible. And for you to tell, I do these things where like I tell stories, for example, if I make a cake for a customer, I can tell a story about, oh, um, when this baby was born, I made the baby shower cake and now I'm making the first birthday cake. I'm really excited. It's a cocoa melon cake. It's a this. People like that kind of storytelling. They want to be involved. They want to see what you're doing. They want their own story to be next. Another thing I do is, just let me give you an example. I baked some cupcakes this morning and they sank. They were very durable cupcakes. I don't know why they sank because I don't know. It happens to the best of us. I've used the recipe a thousand times before. They just sank. And instead of just throwing them away, I took a video of when like they sank and then I threw them away and then I baked another one that came out perfect. 
people want to see that you're human that you make mistakes that even when you make mistakes you don't give your customers the shitty product you make another one you want them to see you you want them to see your personality you want them to see the energy and the the uniqueness you bring to your business you bring to your people want to get involved with that initially i was thinking okay maybe um white um irish people might not want to buy from me because i'm black and everything but you need to sell your brand you need to sell what you do you need to sell before they even give you a chance they don't know if it's delicious they need to see it look great from the pictures you take from the videos you take from how you you know show up online and everything before they decide oh let me see if it tastes great and when it tastes great that's when you tell their friends and then their friends try to buy from you and all of that so the first thing is you need to be able to tell a story tell your own story for example i used to live in ukraine right and then even when i was in ukraine i used to tell a story i still add you need to sell your story yeah <laughs> let me give you an example when i was in ukraine yeah i'm a medical doctor i studied medicine and got a master's in health administration right so I used to sell, sell the story of, oh, I'm a medical doctor, but now I'm into case. And people really do like that kind of thing because it makes them like, it's showing your bravery. They can relate to the bravery because some of them too have been brave in certain aspects of their lives. So they want to get involved. They want to buy what you're selling. Okay, then I go to Ireland and like, when I got here, I realized that, okay, the crowd here is kind of different and you need to be able to, Ukrainians are different from Irish people. That's honest truth, right? And you need to be able to relate to them to be able to sell to them, right? So, no matter how good your product is, you need to put it out there so that people can see it and see how good it is. Otherwise, nobody will buy, not because it is not good, but because they can't see it. So, you need to be able to tell a story at all times. That's what social media is in 2020. It's not my fault. Forgive me. Okay, so number two, yeah, apart from storytelling, the next thing I want you to consider is engagement strategies. This has really been made easy recently because there are different ways to do it on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram. Let me give you an example of something I do. So I do this thing where like, maybe like I made 10 cakes this week. I'll list all 10 cakes in a reel and number them one to 10 and then say, which one is your favorite? So usually people that would normally not comment on your post, right? Not because they don't like you, but because it's a hassle like you know not everybody wants to comment on your post yeah some of them feel like oh i think number four is my favorite and all they need to go do is comment for they don't need to write the whole thing or so it takes away some of the burden of trying to leave a comment or the work of trying to leave a comment you made it easier for them on just commenting commenting the number so that way that's engagement for you instagram sees it as oh this person's content is being engaged so let's push it out further so that's more engagement for you and at the same time you are endearing yourself to your audience if that makes sense another thing i like to do is like when i have problems maybe let me give you an example i made a cake recently for a customer it was black i'm going to put a picture right here and she when she got it she said it was gray when i saw it i was like how is this gray this is black buttercream so i did like a poll on Instagram stories you can do polls where like you can put a question and then have them click yes or no So that way they they also get to feel like they're part of your business. They help you solve some of your problems I was like, oh when you look at this cake, what color do you see black or gray? And like at least 80% of people chose black and 20% of people chose gray And it made me realize that actually some people look at this cake and see gray even though it was black It just made me understand the customer a lot better and so I posted about that. That way people feel like they are a part of your business. You're engaging them. They relate with you. You relate with them, basically. They don't have to buy. But one day they will come and buy because they see you, you're in their faces. And when you relate with, when you engage with people and they engage back with you, Instagram tends to show them your subsequent posts. So it's a win-win situation. So the first thing is you want to, what's the first thing? storytelling you want to be able to tell a story at all times yeah i know social media has kind of made us into storytellers script writers and producers but it is what it is right so those are the two the first one is visual storytelling the second is engagement strategies and the third is educational content so for educational content yeah you want to be very careful and the reason why i say that is this let me give you an example. If you made a post about 
I'm selling my flowers and <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> okay, so let's say for example you made a post about like how you used a old bucket of Nutella and now it's finished and you put your poinsettias in the bowl. It's more likely to attract um, other bakers than to attract buyers of cakes. And it's cakes you sell. The reason is because big people at home that want to buy cake from you do not just have buckets of Nutella lying around. But bakers do. So when bakers, other bakers see it, they tend to see the post and the like and comment. And Instagram will show you to people similar to them. So at the end of the day, you have a comment section full of other bakers. And those are not the people you want. Yes, you want them. Because yeah, at the end of the day, engagement is engagement. And the more engaged your post is, the more Instagram pushes it out. But, yes, you want engagement. But your end game is money. Your end game is to be able to sell what you're selling. Oh, except you sell classes to bakers and, and, and all of that stuff, that makes sense. So when you want to create maybe like educational posts, create educational posts that your bakers, your audiences that buy cakes from you can also benefit from. They are not just for bakers. Except though, like I said initially, you are also trying to attract bakers, right? Because bakers are not the people buying cakes from you. They are your fellow bakers. Yeah, you love to see them. Yeah, I love my baking community and stuff, but... Sometimes you want to attract your own people that will buy it from you because that's last day and you need to earn a salary. So I hope all these three tips I've given you makes a lot of sense. So let me give you a summary. Right? The first thing is telling a story. You want a story. You want to be able to tell them a story. You want to be able to weave a story around the situation and let them be able to relate to you. Number two is engagement strategies. TikTok and Instagram has kind of made it easy. I'm not really an expert in Facebook because I feel like I've not really been really, really active on Facebook, so I can't really say. But for TikTok and Instagram, they made it easy. It's a lot easier. And if you want to create posts and reels, there are some you can create that makes it easy for your audience to engage with you without having to do a lot of typing. Yeah? Number three is educational content. You want to create content that your audience, let me, I want to give you an example of that. Let me give you an example, right? You can be baking a cake and decide that, okay, you want to... Okay, maybe while you're mixing up your cake. For example, I add some oil in my butter-based cakes. So you can say like, okay, you can make a reel about, oh, how you add some oil in your cake because it makes it moister. Sometimes some of these people bake in their homes and they can just learn from your tip and they will save it. And maybe when they save your content, Instagram will show it more to people like that. So that way more people that are your customers get to see it. Bakers too will see it also. Everybody should learn from it. But also you want to remember that you just do not want to attract bakers. You also want to attract the people that will buy from you. So that's all. <laughs> Thank you guys. And if you have any other tip I can learn from or my community on here can learn from, you can just leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys for always watching my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Good?